today is the final push. We're gonna try and get this thing done in about a half a day. We have the reservoir to wrap up, we've got the patio to wrap up, and we have all of our finishing touches, i.e. getting all the waterfalls kind of tweaked, ready to roll, get everything foamed in, get everything nice and clean so that we can turn this thing over to the homeowners later on this afternoon. Super excited about it. We already ran into Scott, the homeowner, and he is super pumped. Cannot wait to get this thing rolling. Let's go. We are back, it's day three out here. We're at kind of a really cool point in the project and I wanna turn the camera on because this is a pond overflowing a negative edge into a pondless waterfall, which we talked about earlier in the video and you've seen kind of some of that framework happening. The reason this is somewhat challenging and maybe confusing to some of you guys and girls out there is how to establish water level from the upper pond as it overflows into the basin. So we have a large piece of slate over here that's sitting in our dingo and this is going to maintain that negative edge. That's what the water is gonna overflow from the pond, overflow this big piece of slate, and then come down through a series of cascades into waterfalls into the reservoir itself, which is located down here. Now, when we're building everything, I wanted to establish the water level of the pond based off of the foundation of this house in order to bring water level as high as I possibly could to all the various viewing areas. So I dropped water level down about three inches below the foundation up over here that runs along this side of the pool house. So what that's going to do is that's where I'm going to, that's probably good right there. We can go a little high. So when we are over here, we're going to excavate our weir, which is that area where the water is going to overflow between the frame rocks. I went ahead and had the guys set up the transit to compensate for the thickness of that stone, which is roughly two inches. And then I also wanted to give us about three inches of water depth. Now I know that's probably a little bit more or a little bit too thick of water based on the flow rate of the pump and the width of that waterfalls is we have about a thousand gallons per linear foot per inch of water. But I I can always dam that water up on top of that slate if I need to. The last thing I wanna do is set that stone too tall in through here, meaning the top of that slate stone that's gonna maintain that negative edge. The last thing I wanna do is set that thing too high and then make all of these edges bad over here. So I'd rather set it a little low and then dam it up after the fact. So I'm just giving myself a little bit of wiggle room based on the calculations of the flow of the pumps that we have in here and the width of this waterfalls coming out of the pond. The reason I'm telling you all this is just make sure you do your due diligence and really understand where water level needs to be, account for the thickness of the stone, even the thickness of the rock pad and the fabric and stuff on top. You can see that they're kind of cutting out this channel. This will be level left to right as well as front to back. And we also want to make sure that this is nice and compacted in through here. So you can see that they're not using those round point shovels and disturbing a lot of this dirt. They're more shaving it to the elevation that it needs to be. So once we get this area kind of carved out we'll fold the underlayment over then the pondless reservoir liner and then we're gonna fold the pond liner back over the top and create an overlap so the pond liner is actually gonna overlap this reservoir liner right here so right now we're just gonna go ahead and shave all this stuff down get it to the elevation we need fabric liner and then more fabric and then we're gonna go ahead and set that stone and then we can continue rocking in all of this area inside the pond as well as continue to work on this waterfalls over here I hope that makes sense to you I'm gonna go ahead and kind of show you the step by step process. We're gonna get this nice and level, cut out some of those roots, and then we will be using a lot of, back, of gravel to backfill behind these rocks. So we'll have to use probably a heck of a lot of foam in order to create a watertight seal. Also, the reason that we are using such a thin piece of slate is so that in the event that the pump ever shuts off, we're not using an eight inch thick piece of stone to maintain that negative edge, driving the level or the liner down even further. Remember, we're gonna foam all this stuff, but that is not a waterproofer. So the water will continue to drop until it gets below the bottom of the stone and it hits the impermeable membrane of the EPDM liner. So I want to use a thin piece of stone as opposed to a thick one. In the event that the pump ever shuts off, that pond will only lose the top two inches of water as opposed to 10 inches or so if we had a much thicker stone. I hope that makes sense to you guys and I'll explain that as we kind of hit all this stuff in. see 
the guys have pulled the pond liner back out over. We have plenty of extra, so we're gonna go ahead and trim off some of this. We'll use that for our bib liner on top of the aqua blocks here to create the illusion of that stream. We're gonna shave out a little bit more back behind where Jack's at just to create a little bit more of a cove, and we're gonna incorporate those gato statues. But what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take this piece of slate that's sitting underneath, set it down on top, and then get a reading from our transit and find out how far below our desired water level it is. If it's within two inches, that's fantastic. We don't want it much lower than three inches though because then we have to start damming things up in order to drive water level in the pond up. This stone is dictating water level in the pond when both pumps are running. So we're gonna go ahead and get that down in there and let's trim our liner so that that thing will fold back in there and then we'll be good to go. So you can see guys are kind of milling around. It is now the end of the day. Really, really happy and pleased with the progress. You can see we've got our three feline statues that are about, God, they look almost 100 years old. They're definitely antique, but they are in, they are plumbed. We used some quarter inch poly tubing that we use in our auto dose units. I don't know if you can see that in there. Anyways, trust me, it's in there. So we've got quarter inch lines feeding these three cats and that is ran off of our two inch line. And we brought the two inch line that's being uh, fed from a 2000 to 5000 SLD pump, which is sitting down in the vault. There's a two inch line that comes all the way over to here. Bulkhead fitting behind this cat. The two inch trunk line is inside the liner. And then we teed up and reduced it all the way down to quarter inch there there, there, and then that two inch line goes underneath this negative edge spill stone, back behind all this rock and gravel. And then the last one is the circulation jet, which we will trim down tomorrow and put a ball valve on, but that's a one inch flex PVC. And then there's a cap right about there. We have about an eight inch stub of pipe at the end of that T. This is that spill stone that we talked about. This is what's going to maintain that top water draw. The water's gonna get pulled across this, exit down into the basin through a series of waterfalls. Let me walk across here. We've got our bib liner in to create that illusion of the false bottom. And then here is waterfalls that's dropping into the reservoir itself. So we've got somewhat of a taller waterfall here. It splits behind this rock and then kind of dances and cascades this way around back in through here. They yeah, lighting down between those two rocks there. We still have a lot of touch up work to do, a lot of grading all in through here. Finish off the rock in our basin, but we're in the home stretch. We've got to finish up the waterfalls up there, feather out our berm, a couple wing wall rocks here, a couple there. And then we also have to build a little patio that's gonna come up out over those paving stones, those wall stones over there. So that's gonna be a little bit of a challenge, but we are gonna get that done as well as get everything else done tomorrow. Hope you guys are enjoying the progress. We are going to crush this thing tomorrow and you'll get to see plenty of beauty shots in the tomorrow afternoon. All right then, good night. Okay, so like I said, today is the final push. We're gonna try and get this thing done in about a half a day. We have the reservoir to wrap up, we've got the patio to wrap up, and we have all of our finishing touches, i.e. getting all the waterfalls kind of tweaked, ready to roll, get everything foamed in, get everything nice and clean so that we can turn this thing over to the homeowners later on this afternoon. Super excited about it. We already ran into Scott, the homeowner, and he is super pumped. Cannot wait to get this thing rolling. Let's go. All right, we've got Corey back over here. He's back from medical leave. His blister healed. All right, so we've got Dan and Luis over here. They are going to start working on the patio. So we're gonna be using this 3 8 stone chip. So they're gonna go ahead and start filling all this up. Got some joining sand over there. We've got our mulch. We've got a handful of extra boulders. Then we're gonna go ahead and move back. Jack, Corey, and I are gonna finish working on the waterfall area and then get the pond rinsed and start filling so that we can go ahead and get that filling while we're finishing off the reservoir area ourselves. So a lot of work ahead of us. As long as we stay efficient and purposeful in the order to which we're doing things, I think we're really gonna make good, good progress today so all right
right, so standing in the garage, our machine is now outside of the garage in the front yard. You can see Jack had to pick it up the remains of the stuff, so I guess that means only one thing. You got water running. Yeah, buddy. What do you think? Should we show them? Yeah. I think they've waited a long time. I don't think so. I think, I think we should so. just make them wait till the next episode. Okay, we can do that too. All right, till next time. See you guys later. Look at that cute butt walk away. Yep. Mm hmm. What? Nothing. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Well, it's been a flurry of activity this morning. We all came together and we reached our finish line. We just pulled the machine out. Patio's done, mulch is in, water is flowing. We've got a few things left to pick up and it looks absolutely stunning. Dan did a fantastic job on the patio to kind of finish up this part of the day. The rest of the guys, Luis, Corey, Jack, and myself, finished up all the edges, getting all the rock in and getting everything cleaned and filled up. And I am just blown away and speechless. It just looks incredible. Hang on. Good morning, everybody. We are back out here at this beautiful Glen Ellen pond into a pond list. And uh, the weather has changed a little bit because it's been a few weeks since I've been out here. Unfortunately, the net is already up, but I think it's going to illustrate perfectly on how to maintain a pond going into, you know, these leaf drop seasons that we have coming out of summer, going into fall. So let me turn the camera around. It turned out absolutely beautiful and the fish are clearly loving life. Really, really am pleased with how it turned out. This also gives me a great opportunity to illustrate to you on how to properly net a pond. So let's go. So here's that patio that we created. You can see we have the netting up. Scott, the homeowner, did a fantastic job running his main line going over the top, which is tenting this net. You can see we already have leaf debris that is collecting. Um, we've got acorns and oak leaves dropping from these overstory oak trees. Um, and soon enough, it will be dropping from the maples and all of that stuff. So what the net is actually doing is preventing all that stuff from dropping down into the pond. And yes, it will end up overflowing uh, into the pondless reservoir down there, but it's preventing anything from dropping to the bottom, which will greatly reduce the amount of maintenance moving forward, especially when opening it up in the spring. This string line, holds it up, is almost acts as the eave of the netting for the pond, and then it goes over the backside. And then any excess netting, you can see he's got weighted down by a handful of stones over here. Let me come down to the bottom. Again, here's that netting, super, super important. You can see all of the leaves already fallen in, on top of the net. But this area down in here, this gravel area, is what we want free of debris. Now, if this net was not up, all of this leaf debris would collect down here and will end up starting here where the water goes back into the reservoir. It will start to collect and then those leaves will continue to get pushed and pushed and pushed. And what'll happen is, is this infiltration area that we have back here will end up being impacted with so much leaf debris that the water won't actually be able to get down to the pumps fast enough to be pumped back up to the waterfalls. So what happens is, is it drives water level up in this pooling area down here. As that water continues to flow over the waterfalls, what'll happen is that water will not be able to get back down to the pumps. It will drive the water level up, causing the feature to leak and obviously lose water. So that's why it's so important to make sure that this area down here, this pondless reservoir stays free of debris. And really that's the only maintenance that you really need to do um, on a pondless waterfall. It's a little bit of a shame that the net's up because it really doesn't take away from the overall beauty of the waterfalls, but it just, it's such a gorgeous split waterfalls coming down that negative edge coming over the top. So, so awesome. But by coming out here and showing you this project a few weeks later, it really provided the opportunity to illustrate the importance of fall netting, what it can do and how it can help with your water feature. So listen up everyone, this water feature was an absolute pleasure to install. 
Really, really glad we got to come back out a little bit later and show you some of the fall netting and, and, and how that is installed and also the importance of the fall netting. Thank you for, so much for watching. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please let us know in the comment section below. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel so that you can stay up to date on all the content that we're coming out with three times a week. Hey, till next time, Chris from Team Aquascape, we'll see you later. Bye.